Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. There are two days that are most important when you build a new engine. Uh, the first, as you probably saw the video already, uh, is when you start the motor for the very first time. Uh, it's a big deal. Uh, you find out if the motor runs at all. The second big day is dyno day, which is today for me. Um, and I'm stinking nervous for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> but it's the day you find out if uh, all those parts that you put together, uh, do they work well together? Uh, do you make the horsepower that you thought you were going to make? Uh, do you make more horsepower than you thought you were going to make? Um, whatever it may be. So anyway, today is my scheduled dyno day. Uh, I've got to be there in a little over half an hour. So come along with me. We'll find out what she makes. Uh, we're also doing the comparison today uh, between the LS6 intake manifold and the Dorman LS2 intake manifold that I ported. Um, so if you go back and look at some of the videos, I show you how um, I ported um, that intake manifold so you can kind of see the details that I did there. Um, we're going to do an A-B comparison on those uh, results as well. So should be an exciting day. So uh, come along with me. Let's check it out. Okay, so you just saw the dyno run. Um, I thought I'd take a moment and go over uh, the final results. Uh, this is a little bootleg, um, but it's kind of the easiest way to show you the dyno graph um, and talk through it um, as well. So uh, here we go. So uh, probably the first and most important question, uh, how much power did it make? Uh, final numbers. Uh, 408 horsepower, 381 foot-pounds of torque. Um, the numbers were a little lower than what I had anticipated just based off of uh, some other people's engine builds, uh, what you read about uh, the Corvette form and some other places. Um, I had expected higher numbers. <clears throat> Not entirely sure why um, the numbers were a little lower than I had anticipated. I don't know if it's the, the cam that I have. Obviously, is isn't a huge cam, and it isn't designed uh, to be a peak horsepower uh, type of camshaft. Um, but be as it, as it may, uh, the engine runs great. It pulled uh, very hard all the way up to um, the red line. We set red line uh, at 6,700, though it was still pulling pretty hard um, all the way to the point where we we set a red line, but that's just more of a, a safety factor. Um, working with the dyno operator, the tuner, um, tried several things. We added in some more timing. Um, at some point, the engine really didn't respond to more timing, so we pulled that back out. Uh, no need running more timing than what the engine is responding to. Um, so it helps us get a little bit safer of a tune. So uh, what you're looking at here is a comparison of uh, the red line is with the LS6 intake manifold. The blue line is when we swapped uh, to the ported Dorman LS2 intake manifold. Um, that was the only thing that changed. The LS6 intake manifold was running the, uh, I believe it's an 80 millimeter uh, BBK throttle body. And then the uh, blue line is the 90 millimeter LS2 throttle body because um, that's what you would pair that uh, LS2 intake manifold with. So as you can see from about 3,900 RPMs up, the dormant intake manifold made more torque and horsepower all the way up. And the most important takeaway here is that it did not lose any power 
below that that threshold so from 3900 up uh, it just simply made more power everywhere um, the red line peak horsepower uh, was 400 and torque was 374 uh, so that means peak power gain was eight horsepower and seven foot-pounds of torque which doesn't sound like a lot but what is more important is where it made power and the fact that it didn't lose anything down low so if you look here maybe 41 4200 rpms uh, we're looking at the torque line here uh, it gained 10, 12, probably maybe not quite 15 foot-pounds of torque uh, right here in the middle of the power band, that 40, 41, 4200 RPM uh, range. It really gained a lot there, uh, which I was pretty happy about. The LS6 intake manifold really sat pretty flat from maybe 30, just over 3500 RPMs to 40. 200 rpms um, and didn't gain a lot in the torque but the dormant intake manifold uh, from 3900 already started gaining torque again so that was pretty nice so while it didn't gain a ton in peak power um, it did broaden out the torque curve and uh, we gained some in the lower you know mid-range here uh, which i was pretty happy about Another interesting talking point, um, you may not be able to read it here on the screen, uh, but it's where peak horsepower and peak torque, uh, at what RPM they came in. So the uh, Dorman LS2 intake manifold versus the LS6 intake, it moved the peak horsepower RPM up from just over 6,000 RPMs to 6,300, and the torque peak uh, moved from just over 4,800 RPMs to about 5,100 RPMs. And typically the concern is that as you move uh, that torque curve up in the RPMs, then typically you're losing something uh, in the lower RPMs. But in this case, that didn't happen. Uh, the lower RPMs uh, right are spot on. I mean, absolutely no change before 3,900. So we didn't lose anything. We only gained power, uh, horsepower and torque uh, from 3,900 up. So there's really no drawback um, to running that intake manifold and the larger throttle body as well. And obviously if you had a larger camshaft, I think these, uh, the difference between the, the LS6 and the, the Dorman LS2 um, gains uh, would get even larger, you know, the, the higher horsepower uh, motor that you had. The other interesting thing, so I also went back, um, see if I can pull it up. So from the previous owner, you probably can't see this very well, um, but I had an old dynograph. Now this is all the way back from 2004, uh, the previous owner included with the car, um, a dynograph. So the old motor made 370 horsepower, 370 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Uh, and by the way, both of these are SAE numbers. Um, so that's a, a corrected number. The standard numbers, uh, which are a little tougher to compare, but you know, standard is what the motor made uh, right then and there on the dyno. Uh, SAE corrected numbers, uh, corrected to a same temperature and elevation, barometric pressures, there's a number of factors there, uh, but it helps uh, make dyno numbers a little bit more comparable. So someone, you know, close to elevation as I am in North Carolina, uh, could compare dyno numbers uh, with someone at a higher elevation, maybe in another state, uh, and takes out some of the variables of temperature uh, or humidity in the, um, the day you happen to, to run on the dyno. So anyway, uh, these are SA numbers, both on the old motor and of course the, uh, the dyno run I just had done. Um, <clears throat> what's interesting, just to, to point out the difference, so really here I'm comparing the um, old motor to the new motor, and you know, you say, well, it only picked up 11 foot-pounds of torque uh, at peak numbers, and that, that's very true. What's interesting, though, is where it gained power. So I was comparing, I don't have a good way to overlay these two dynographs, um, but I was 
plotting some of the points, looking at you know horsepower and torque uh, at the lower RPMs, 3,000, 4,000 um, on up. Down low, there really wasn't much change in power level. So even going to the higher flowing 243 uh, ported heads and a little bit larger cam, because the old motor was a old Thunder Racing 220 cam. So it was a 220 on the intake, 220 on the exhaust side. And whereas the cam I'm running now, the cam motion uh, Titan 4, um, I believe the 227 on the intake side, 232 uh, duration on the exhaust side. So it's maybe what I'd call a medium size cam. So a little bit larger on the cam. Um, and then of course going from the 241 uh, stock heads to the ported 243 heads. Um, really where the power difference came is from 5,000 RPMs and up. You know, it started making a little bit more power around 4,500 RPMs, but really where you saw the difference is from 5,000 to 6,500 plus. Um, the old motor, uh, that dyno run, looks like it stopped maybe 63, 6,400. Um, the new motor was still making power, so we pulled it uh, cleanly to 65. Um, so if you look around, say, 6,000 RPMs, compared the new motor to the old motor, the new motor is making a solid 40 horsepower and 40 foot-pounds of torque more uh, than the old motor. The new motor, those heads and that cam, really keep pulling uh, all the way up. You see how broad this um, torque curve is. It doesn't fall off uh, like the old motor does. The old motor just runs out of, uh, out of breathing room. Uh, those heads and that cam just can't support uh, power at the higher RPM. So that's really the difference uh, when you go to ported heads and a larger cam. The torque uh, continues to build into the upper RPMs and of course uh, the horsepower um, is reflected in that as well. So this motor, you know, I didn't lose anything down low and then of course some pretty substantial gains um, at the top end. So 5,000 to 6,500 RPMs um, upwards of 40 horsepower and 40 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, of course, that's at the wheels. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. The motor runs excellent. Uh, no drivability issues. I can uh, sit in a draft through with the air conditioning on. Uh, I don't have to worry about the motor stalling. Um, even low-speed drivability in a parking lot, uh, no issues there. So I'm pretty happy with that cam um, and how the tune uh, came together as well. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Um, I was expecting a little higher horsepower number. Um, maybe at some point I may do a compression check, uh, just see what my cylinder uh, compression numbers are. The motor runs so good though, I don't anticipate finding any uh, mechanical issues. Yeah, it really runs well. So you know, if I ever get a chance to run the car again, uh, once I get some more miles on it, uh, this down and run was done with maybe uh, 600 miles on the motor. It may loosen up a bit uh, as I get more miles on it. <clears throat> so it'd be interesting to see if that correlates to a change in what kind of horsepower numbers it puts out. So if I ever get a chance to run it on the dyno again, um, I'll just see how, how it compares. Um, it, again, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal for me. I don't drag race. Um, I built the motor to go to the um, to road course tracks. And so I needed a nice broad uh, torque curve uh, something that wasn't peaky in power. Um, I don't want to eat anything that comes on like a light switch. I need a nice broad usable RPM range uh, and that's how the motor turned out. So from that perspective, I'm very happy with it. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to post up questions. Uh, if anybody else has been running this cam, I'd be curious to know what kind of horsepower numbers um, you got out of it. And if you have any questions about the build uh, or the the downer numbers, I realize you probably can't see it uh, super well here, but if you have any questions, hit me up. But as always, thanks for tuning in to Scruff's Garage, and look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks.